Welcome to 2x4 Hardcore, Episode 8. The iPad is better. Hey guys, so it's finally 2012. If you didn't see, I actually got 25 likes on the Facebook page before today. So that was a major accomplishment. I actually got like nine people to like the Facebook page. So I hope I get more likes so that I can do more giveaways in the future. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing some Modern Combat 3 gameplay. And I have a guest star for that. Also, I'm going to be having Ordering Chaos guest stars. And they're going to be talking about the Ranger specs. I'm going to have one of the Batman Arkham City Lockdown boss kills. And finally, I'm going to announce the winner of the $5 app giveaway. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys enjoy the episode. And I hope you had a great New Year's Eve. Okay, so this is the Modern Combat 3 segment that I was talking about. And today I'm joined by Root L. And basically we're just going to run one of the maps and we're going to discuss what's happening in this game. So do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm Ruto. Hello. <laughs> okay. So we're on the same team here and there's two people on the other team right now. So this is the basic setup. So we're playing a team deathmatch. And the goal is just to kill everyone on the other team and to get a certain amount of kills. I don't really know. Uh, what would you set it to? 150. 150. Yeah. So we'll probably get to the time limit before that. You stole my first kill because I lagged. So the controls on this are pretty good. I, on the iPad, it's actually kind of harder. It's kind of hard to press the sprint button and also to try to aim and shoot. So if you have an iPad, then you may have some trouble at first. You can actually adjust the buttons. Ah, I just died. I saw. It's a little hard on this for me too. Yeah. Because every once in a while I'll hit the grenade button instead of the shoot button. Yeah. I'm just going to show my armory, I guess. So you have a primary and a secondary weapon. And you can add different attachments to it. I have these different ones, so I'm just going to use this one right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was preoccupied. I got him for you. Alright. So this guy's sniping right here. I think he might kill me. Let's see. Damn. Ah, uh, I was getting shot by two, from two different directions. I tried to get the other guy, but lag killed me. Ah. Uh, so, it's it's lagging on your device, right? Yeah. And you're using the iPod Touch? Yeah. Hmm. It might be because we're Skyping at the same time, or it could be Game Loft's fault, I'm not sure. It's because we're Skyping. Alright. I can't even charge this when I do it, or else it'll lag. Really? So, when you get kill streaks, there's different things that you get. Like there's satellite scan, helicopter and turret. Helicopter and turret, yeah. Those ones are helpful. This is unbelievably slow. Really? Yeah. I think I died. Yeah. Yeah, I'm dying a lot too. They doubled our score. Oh, uh, the helicopter shooting at me. I can't get shot by the helicopter. Oh, you have a perk for it? I have camouflage thing. Ah, yeah. Nice. And I upgraded it. I think I have the health boost thing and I upgraded that. Yeah, I have the health one too. Yeah, that one's really helpful. Ooh, headshot. On Lewis. Lewis? Yeah. Yeah, he keeps killing us. Ah, oh, there's a turret. I'm gonna destroy it. There we go. Yeah, turrets don't hit me either. You're so lucky. That's really helpful, because they think I'm not there, because the turret's not shooting me. Wait, how many perks can you get for your character? You can get two. Two? Yeah, and then a grenade. Oh, uh, I might have to get the camouflage one. Yeah, 
the shadow created. And it costs like 60,000 of those pieces, right? Yeah. Lag sucks. Yeah. I'm not having any lag though. The attachment that I added for this gun, for this gun has a lot better aim. I think it's, I think it's ACOG scope. I use that too. Yeah, it's really good. Some of the attachments I add so that I can get the XP bonus then. Like, um, I added grip because I think if you get a certain amount of kills with grip on, then you get a 10,000 10, XP bonus or something. So I think the best match I ever had, I went 50 and 2 or something. That's nice. But I don't think they were all high levels, so I'll save you. Oh, thank you. There we go. Do you use the FMJ bullets? FMJ? Yeah. Uh, for some of the guns I have to, because their damage isn't that good. But for the other guns, I usually just use like grip or something. But yeah, the the FMJ bullets are helpful. I think I got this one at level forty five or something. Yeah. Whatever it is. You got, you got that uh, one gun that I won. Oh okay. Oh, uh, what level are you right now? Forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah, I get it at forty-six. Oh, uh, I think if we had the sound on for the game, we'd be able to hear some of the sounds that people have when they kill you, because you can uh, buy different sounds. Teleports around corners when I'm shooting him. Really? Because of my lag. Oh, uh, I thought it was because of glitching or something. No. Uh, it's like with my lag, whenever I'm shooting somebody, yeah. they'll just right by me. Yeah, and now they have a helicopter. Okay, those don't hit me. So lucky. I know. They might actually hit 150 before the time ends. <laughs> God you damn. Most of those for me. Yeah. I'm dying a lot too, though. Bombers? Yeah. Yeah, I hate those. It's us two versus their whole team. Oh no, there's three of us. Wow. This guy just came. Well, he may be able to help us. He's a high level. It's us three versus their whole team. Oh no, there's four of us now. Do you ever use red dot sight? The attachment? I used it on my first gun. Uh, it's kind I, of helpful. I didn't even realize that it was there. Oh really? Yeah, that was when I first started, like, killing more than I started dying more. Uh. It's because I can go and shoot people and they can't see me on the map. Yeah, I'm kind of going on a killing streak now. I got the bomber, or the airstrike. Nice. Didn't do anything, though. I only got the... The only thing I got this whole match was one satellite scan. I think we should stay together as a team. Yeah. I'm gonna follow you. Let's go this oh, way. I was gonna follow you. Alright, let's go this way. There's someone right here. There's on my right. satellite scan. In here, I think. No, I just had. They're like teleporting from me. Me? Yeah. Because <laughs> of my leg. Yeah. I think we're doing a lot better now. They've only gotten like 10 kills for our 25. I don't get the whole point of a nuke. I think it's glitched. What do you mean glitched? Cause I, there'll be times when I have like so many kills, I'll be at the top of the scoreboard, mm -hmm. and then someone else will be Oh yeah, you, you have to get it, you have to get in a kill streak. Uh, you can't just get a certain number of kills, you have to get them all in a row. Uh, that sucks. I think it's like 20 or 25, I'm not sure. If you don't have the perk that reduces kill streaks. That sucks. I will avenge, oh uh, no. <laughs> We're almost tied now. Yes, killed him. Good job. Yeah, my kill death ratio is like above 1.6, I think. It doesn't change much because I've had so many kills and deaths. So it only changes after a few matches now. It doesn't change much for me because it's like I'll do good a match, then mm -hmm. I'll just do bad a match. Yeah. So I'll build it up, and then it'll just go right back down. Yeah, when I first started playing, I was pretty terrible, so my KDR was like 
uh, 0.3 or something. I'm not sure. And then eventually I started getting better, but it didn't change that dramatically. I think we're actually about to win. I want to get the final kill. Don't, don't. I got it. Oh, nice. Alright, so we won the match by 11. We had a pretty bad start. I got second place. With You're 42 and 39. Wow. I'm 13 and 41. And Jeez. I'm the third on our team. Well, we still managed to pull it off. So this is capture the flag. Yep. And we just have to capture any f enemy flag and bring it to the other base. It's nothing special. For some reason, I just got really, really laggy. Like, every time I turn, it's all blurry. Jeez. Are you on my team? I'm not sure. So I guess this is... That was an example of what happens when you lag, but it stopped now. You're sprinting faster than me, and I'm holding my sprint button. That's probably because I have the perk for it. I don't think, oh, nice. I, I'm not sure if I do or not. I just made it out the building. Wow. Huh. I would go for the flag, but lag would just kill me. <laughs> yeah, I only experienced lag at the first part there. I get lag when I plug my thing into the charger. Mm -hmm. Like, for like the first two minutes it'll be laggy like this. Yeah, I think Game Off should at least try to attempt to fix some of the lag on the iPod touches. Some of those lines that they have when you die are really lame. <laughs> like, is your device slow on batteries? That one's lame. It might mean that you're laggy because when it's low on battery you get lag. That's probably what it means. Yeah, that's, that happens to me all the time too. Mm -hmm. Me as well. It says military support is unavailable. I hate when that happens to me too. Yeah. It usually happens on the airstrikes. Yeah, and when there's a helicopter, it's an even longer time. They have to wait for it. Okay, so you saw some of the gameplay today. Alright, Happy New Year. Yeah. Merry Christmas. So this is the Order and Chaos segment for today. I actually have a guest star. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Hey guys, my name in game is Headshot BTCH. Uh, if I've ganked you in Vega, sorry about that. And I am brought here today by Idaho to talk about Rangers and their specs and possibly a new future update. So we're just gonna get into the two different questions. I know that you're a full archer, right? Or you have a few skills in the other one? I have maybe 13 points, I'd say, in oh, assassin. All right. So not very many, so, mainly archer. So the question is, what are the skills that you recommend for your respective class at level 60? You can just read them off and describe them, I guess. Okay, well, for me, I would recommend spending an acute toxicity and uh, having an extra DPS on your weapon, always good. Can never go wrong with that. Pin foot and powerful pin. And if you combine those two together, that will be a five second move that you can use. And it will pretty much lock the enemy where they are. They can't move for five seconds. Mm -hmm. Extremely helpful. Uh, though as a warning, any ranger with escape can break through that and can still move. Path of shooter, deadly aim, skillful shooting, all of those, if you're an archer, definitely should be maxed. Snipe, obviously, is your main weapon damage dealing kind of shot, and that you will probably be trying to spam throughout the entire battle. Explosive shot, avulsion shot are both really useful, explosive for knockdown, and split shot. If you're doing dungeons, split shot max to the full can be very useful to help DPS with mage. Very nice. And assassin, I would highly recommend discern weakness, extra 5% chance to critical hit, cutthroat, fully maxed apna, uh, which causes the silence condition and makes it so any monk or mage 
won't be able to cast any spell or heal spell for six seconds, and you as a monk can appreciate how annoying that can be. Escape, movement speed increased by 50% for 10 seconds. Not necessary, but definitely very useful for getting around places like Rift. Rapid step, the escape skill also increases your dodge chance by 50% when active. Very good for getting away. Those, in a nutshell, would be my recommended points that you would spend in. Uh -huh. uh, the rest you can sort of fill how you please, but as a warning, that's my recommended build, and every build is your own personal choice. Mm -hmm. That's just how I prefer to play the game. What gear do you recommend to go with those skills that you just named? For me, I have been very, very stubborn about not crafting uh, because I find it a waste of perfectly good gold considering I'm on the Arcadian Forest server and a stack of poor fur considering you need maybe a hundred of those to level up your crafting one level. 100 stacks you could get maybe four or five hundred gold for that yeah i just don't find that necessary so considering i don't craft i have something called a reinforced stealth hunter's coat mm -hmm. which you can purchase on the auction house for maybe 300 to 500 gold yep and that's almost the equivalent of reinforced rune gear plate body. I have Kermode's shoulder on my shoulder slot. I get it for the hit level, which is very nice. Uh, it makes my hit level 100, which is good. As a warning, during the time of this podcast, the new dungeon is E.T., Arister's Temple, and all of what I get from E.T. is the Hidden Cloak, Crystal Ring of Eagle Eye, and Suri's trinket those mm -hmm. are my three items from et that i use as an archer so you actually don't have any rune gear or anything um i have a track killer's helmet which is the rune helmet track killer's gloves which are the rune gloves and as boots i have reinforced rider's calage i have a dark assassin necklace which cost 120 souls and a reinforced devil's dagger but i only found it necessary for two pieces of rune gear. So have you actually gone ahead and reinforced those pieces? I have not because I am still working on my crafting, uh -huh. but I am working on it and I would actually, all of this gear is for generally people who don't know how to craft or can't craft or don't have the money or the time. If you can craft, I would highly recommend full reinforced rune gear, which is way better than all of my gear. Mm -hmm. The only reason I'm using all of this gear is because I am not at the crafting level to make it. So for people who are just making characters or are maybe at level 30 or something, why would you recommend Archer over Assassin? For leveling, I would recommend Archer. I personally leveled up as an Assassin, and I have mainly played as an Assassin, but I just recently switched to Archer. You can barely get any runs in as a Sin. So if you're at level 60, I would recommend a respect to an Archer so you can get dungeon runs in. But if you're leveling, Archer is great because you can keep the enemy at a distance. So you don't need any potions or food if you're playing smart. Uh, it's also, you can sneak, which is extremely helpful in some circumstances. If you ha have to, say, get to a boss and there are a bunch of little mobs surrounding him, then you can just sneak past them and it has come in handy so much. So essentially, Archer is more of a PvE spec, and Assassin is more of a PvP spec, right? Definitely. As soon as arenas come rolling around, I'm going back to Assassin. Yeah, because it's probably because Assassins do a lot more damage on the bosses, and Warriors are supposed to be taking the main aggro there, so that's probably why people want Archers more. So maybe when you spec back to Assassin for the arenas, you can come on again and tell us some skills about that, I guess. Absolutely. I don't pretend to be a pro archer or a pro sin, as mm -hmm. they say in this game. I'm just playing the game and giving in my opinion. So the second question is... Will there be a new level cap and area in a future update? I think that Gameloft is eventually going to add a new area and a level cap. The only problem with that is that all of our level 60 gear that we have reinforced will actually become null. 
and we'll have to get all this new level 70 gear and people will probably have to spend money again i'm definitely with you i think game mm -hmm. loft has dug themselves into a pretty deep hole here yeah. because what they've done is they've made it so that a bunch of level 60 gear is almost impossible to get but once you do have that once you've obtained that 60 gear you and it's really hard to obtain for instance the sun sienna crossbow i've probably done 200 300 relics key runs haven't seen a single epic wow. let alone the crossbow i want say i spent a hundred dollars on reset tablets from game loft just to try to get this sun sienna crossbow i finally get it and then maybe two weeks later the new level cap rolls around and with it new and better gear suddenly a green drop that sells for maybe 10 gold on the auction house is easier and better than a sun sienna crossbow which before took me a hundred dollars in real world money to get it's going to make a lot of players angry a lot of players are going to quit the game because they used to have the best gear and now they're all getting shown up by greens that are just popping up from the new area although there is an alternative to this Game off could just allow like upgrades to level 70 gear from your current gear or something and maybe that would allow players to continue playing without having to worry about getting new gear. I think you're right. I think what they should do definitely is maybe in this new area instead of new weapons and new armor put in weapon and armor upgrades that you can attach say dungeon hunter i think it is well in that game you can equip gems i believe onto your oh, really? weapons yeah you can do that in infinity blade as well yeah in infinity blade say they did that and instead of releasing new weapons and gear they just released a gem sort of idea yeah that you can equip so then every armor piece could maybe equip one or two gems per armor piece mm -hmm. that would be able to upgrade the equipment and not have as many people quit that would be wonderful the only problem with that with all of the gems would they be able to be tradable and if not how would you be able to get them without the rest of the level 60s crowding the same exact spot mm -hmm. it would create a giant overpopulation and probably a bunch more server problems they could make different dungeons in order to get those gems as you said and then they wouldn't have overcrowding because only a team of four could roll on it instead yeah, who knows that would probably be a very very good solution yep i'm probably gonna end up posting that on the forums i think it's a really really good idea all right but the level cap i can tell you this is probably not gonna come before pvp arenas well thanks for coming on the show today you talked about the archer spec and also about the future of the game. So I hope to see you in future episodes. Uh, I will look forward to coming back. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. So that was the interview for Ordering Chaos. I thought it went pretty well. We discussed some really interesting topics. If you didn't notice, I actually only had one guest star for it. And at the beginning of the episode, I said I'd have two. Two of the other people actually couldn't make it. And I was going to take one of them. So thanks, Headshot, for volunteering and saving the day, I guess. Hopefully, the other guest stars will appear on future episodes as well. So last episode, I showed some of the gameplay of Batman Arkham City Lockdown. And today, I'm just going to show a little two-minute segment. And this is actually the boss level with Two-Face. So basically you just go through all these bosses and then you get to the final one, which is Two-Face. So at this part, you have to try to throw this thing and you aim it. And you have to try to hit him so that he doesn't shoot you. So there's motion controls too in this game. So it's basically just like the regular fighting levels, but it's a little more challenging. Like this guy shoots you every time he does that thing. So you have to try to kill him fast, because he shoots a lot. I don't know if I can kill him fast. I always miss that. Not sure what's happening here. Is it glitched or something? Because I'm not able to do anything. What the heck? It hadn't been glitched, you would have seen what happened there. I don't think I'm going to waste my time with trying to do that whole thing again. I already did it like three times. 
And if it's just going to glitch again, then there's no point. So maybe next week I'll show some of the other bosses if I'm able to actually beat this one without it being glitched. So stay tuned for next week. So now I'm going to get into the giveaway. I'm actually showing my computer screen right now and you can see the avatar background. But I'm just going to show how I'm doing this so that I make it fair to all and you see that it's not rigged. So in Microsoft Word, I made a document and I made a list of the 25 people who like the page in order. So the first one is me and the 25th is the last one who liked it. Uh, so I found this website, random.org, and pretty much you just enter the different values. So if you want to find one winner, you just put the number one here. And I'm putting the values between 2 and 25 because I don't want to be entered in it. So all I have to do is press get numbers and it'll select one of the numbers randomly. So you can see who won in a second. And it's number 6. So let's see who that is. Number 6 is Michael B. Titman. So congratulations, you win the $5 app giveaway. Uh, you can either choose Grand Theft Auto 3 or any $5 app of your choice. I'll be emailing you with the code for whatever app you choose. So congratulations. If I get more likes in the future, hopefully I will do more and bigger giveaways. So thank you for liking the page, everyone. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've actually switched from playing my iPod in the gameplay videos to the iPad. I have two reasons for that. One, it actually is a lot better on camera. Because for the iPod in episode 4, uh, it was too small and you could barely see anything. And two, it's just a lot easier for me to play on the iPad. And I can get all the games I want and they're a lot better quality. So when I'm doing the podcast from now on... I'm just going to be showing gameplay videos of iPad games. Basically, it's still 2x4 hardcore because I guess the iPhone is the reason that the iPad came out. And I may still have iPod videos, but probably not. So I'm not going to change the name of the show just because I use the iPad more. But basically it's just kind of saying that you can play hardcore games no matter what the size is. So I guess that's kind of the whole reason for it. My shout out for today goes to the Guild Vengeance. I actually just joined them and a lot of the people that I've known in the past are actually in that guild. Some people who come on the show who are guest stars, they're actually in that guild like Headshot, Moonlight, and even Cap Crunch. I think it's a really fun guild. I have a lot of fun in there, and they run dungeons a lot. We're at about 115 members right now, so if you want to join, just message Shaker or Shakerism, that's his alt, on the Arcadian Forest server. I know that I post this on the Order and Chaos forums, and so it probably attracts that audience. But I really hope that you guys can try these games or I attract some people who already play these games to watch the show. So if you don't like the games, that's fine. You can just skip through this segment. But I show these games because I think they're really fun. And I know that World of Midgard is coming out soon as well. So I'll have a more of a segment for that on the show. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to skip through the whole episode. You may just be interested in what you see. So I just wanted to remind you guys of the Podomatic page. I know that a lot of you use the YouTube page more, but I actually make two different versions of the show. I make the MP3 version and the YouTube version. So if you want to listen to the show on the go and you don't have Wi-Fi to watch the YouTube video, you just go to Podomatic and you click on my page and the Podomatic link is at the top and all you have to do is click on the right hand side and it says subscribe with iTunes 
And when you click that, it'll open up your iTunes library and put in all seven episodes. And I think each time that I release a new episode, it will be automatically added to your iTunes library. And you can just sync it. I know it would be... Also, I try to talk as much as I can during the gameplay videos. So that when you're listening without the video in it, you kind of understand what's going on. I know it's kind of been hard to follow some of the things. So in the future, I'll try to explain what's going on in the gameplay video so you don't have to actually watch the gameplay. My question of the day for today is what game will you be playing most in 2012? You may not know exactly what games are coming out, but I just want to hear what you guys think you'll be playing. It could be World of Midgard or maybe Order in Chaos or maybe another game that hasn't been released yet. So you can post that on the Facebook page or on the forum if you want to. And I may read them off next episode. Okay, so next week I'm going to be having episode 9 and 10. And I think I'm going to have guest stars for both of those episodes. Some people have already contacted me and said they want a guest star. And others ha said they want to recur from their guest starring in the past. Like some of the guest stars I had today will probably want to come on again. So next week, I'll be having another Q&A episode, and I'll probably talk about World of Midgard a little, because that's on its way, and maybe we'll get some surprises this week, like Nova 3, which I'm highly anticipating, and I'll also be showing some Infinity Blade 2, Minecraft, more Modern Combat 3, and anything else, so... I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I wish you all a happy new year, and I really hope that this year will be huge for iOS gaming, and I hope that my podcast does a lot better and it improves each week. Bye, guys.